Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video I'm going to be showing you some common ways that I have been using the new camera on my Epilog Fusion Edge. So for those of you that don't know, the Iris camera is an artwork placement camera that comes on the new laser. And with that, I've been able to not only correct issues such as missing letters on a cutting board engraving, but I can also use it to accurately place customized names or other things on pre-engraved items, as well as awkwardly shaped items. One of the best things about the camera for me is actually placing logos and different designs on oddly shaped objects. So as an example, I have these red anodized pieces here that have the hole in the center. They also have a chamfered edge to them and they have a little lip and cutout and everything else. So normally when I'm doing these, I have to do a lot of design to figure out exactly where it's going to land, exactly what it's going to look like. But in this case, I used the camera to set everything up and I'm going to show you exactly what I did. But here is one where there's little stars in here as well. Quickly, I'll show you how I set it up and then I'll send one over and we'll engrave another one. So first up, I have these anodized red metal pieces that are part of the Kerf Cut Pro. For this example, I'm going to go over to the machine. I'm going to show you how it looks in the camera and then show you how I engrave it. Here in the Epilogue dashboard, I have turned my camera on and the lid is closed so that I can see exactly where my graphic will land. So this is the graphic. I can easily drag things around if I need to. Currently, everything's ungrouped. So I can drag around one individual element or I can actually join everything together, make sure that it is grouped, and then drag it all as one piece. I am able to undo and redo things as well, which makes it super simple to manipulate things how I want. And I can also scale them just by dragging things around. If you need to rotate it, you can also do that. So I found that this process with the camera is much easier to do and has a lot less problems than trying to just measure things and figure it out on the fly. The camera makes this seamless and so simple that I don't think I'd ever go back. So now that you see the design, let's go ahead and print one over to the laser. The next example I have is actually fixing an item that somebody had brought in. This happened a couple of weeks ago, so I don't actually have that item anymore, but I did my best to replicate the example. So they brought in a cutting board just like this one. You'll see that they had a name and then they had kitchen. So it's missing the possessive apostrophe S. This person had ordered the cutting board on Etsy and when they went to put in what they wanted engraved on the board, they left off the apostrophe S thinking that the person engraving the board would automatically add it and that was not the case. So I replicated the apostrophe S in the font that they were using. I then took that, put it onto the camera, positioned it onto the cutting board where it needed to be and fixed this issue with no problem whatsoever. The client was super happy and this is a case where it almost would have been impossible to do without this camera. It could have been done, but it would have been a really long trial and error. But with the camera, I fixed it in a few seconds because I could actually see where it was going to land. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this cutting board into the machine, put the apostrophe S on it and show you what it looks like. One of the things that I need to mention about using the camera is that your material or the item that you're trying to engrave needs to be in focus. What I mean by that is you have to focus the laser head onto that material. If it's out of focus, it's not going to be accurate and you're going to end up with an issue. So always make sure that you focus the laser head to the item or material that you're working with before you begin the process. So here's the graphic for the cutting board. So I went ahead and added the apostrophe S in red because that is what I'm going to be adding. When I send this over to the laser, I can split the red out into a different process than the black. 
So I'm going to go ahead and print this and send it over to my laser dashboard. Once it prints, it's going to send it over to the epilogue dashboard. Over on the left, I'm going to click the video button and the camera will show up. So what I'm going to do is zoom in to that area. You'll see that my graphic is much larger than what's on the cutting board. But what I can do is actually grab the graphic and scale it so I can get it closer to the right size. Now, in order to replicate this exactly, it's going to take a little bit of time to just scale it so you get the right effect. And you can move it left and right with keys on your keyboard, but you're going to scale it until it overlaps the existing logo. And this is where the S is going to land. So what I wanna do is actually split it by color so it separates the black from the red. I'm going to turn the black off. And now you'll see where my graphic is versus where the current engraving is. So it'll add my apostrophe S right behind the name Kate. So I'm going to go ahead over to my settings for the red, and I'm going to go to my wood settings and choose a clip art engraving. And I'm actually going to bump this up to 75% speed and then send this over to the laser. And just like that, the cutting board is fixed. So now I have the apostrophe S and the possessive nature of the logo was fixed. So this is an instance where I was able to fix it within just seconds because I have that camera. Another great use for a laser camera is customizing pre-made items. So in this case, I have a coaster that is pre-engraved and pre-cut. So a good example of this is if you're going to a craft show or some kind of art market, somewhere where you take your machine with you, you can create a bunch of custom items really quickly if you have them pre-made. So if you take a bunch of these and they're pre-made when you go to the show, engraving and cutting this will take, you know, two to three minutes maybe. But if all you're doing is adding a name, it's going to take less than a minute, which is going to save you a bunch of time if you have a few people that are in line for them. This gives you the ability to not only show people already what physically they're going to be getting with half the engraving already done, but it gives you the opportunity to engrave it in front of them and customize it with a name or a date or a number, whatever it may be, and they can watch the process and appreciate more the quality that goes into your product. I'm going to add a name and number to it, and I'm going to do that all with just the camera. Let's go ahead and put this in the machine. We're going to focus the laser head to this material, position it with the camera, and then engrave it. So just like with the cutting board, I'm going to turn on the camera and I'm going to zoom in so I can see the actual item better. You will see that I do have a lot of overhead light. So if I zoom in just a little bit more, it becomes a little bit more visible. I'm going to grab my graphic and drag it down. I put the item into the machine upside down. So I'm going to rotate this. And if you're worried about the angle over here on the left, you will see that you can type in the value that you want so that it is exact. So now I'm going to drag it in the place where I want it to be and turn it just a little bit more so that it follows this arc. And this is exactly what I want to see. And then I'm going to print this and send it over to the laser. And just like that, in less than a minute, I have a customized item that I can sell. The best use for this that I have found is if you have an item that sells quickly, or like I said before, if you're going to a craft show or an artist thing and you're making items on the spot, having stuff pre-engraved and pre-cut that you can just add a name to later, that is one of the great uses for this camera. For one of my last examples, I actually have this custom pen and case 
that my friend Michael over at Falling Creek Woodworks made for me a couple of years ago. What I wanna do is actually put my logo on the top of this case. Now I could go through the process of measuring this and putting it into the laser and figuring out where everything goes. But with the camera, I'm just going to line up the art like I have in the past examples, put it right over the top of this and engrave it that way because it's significantly faster than trying to figure out all the measurements and I can see real time where it's going to land and what it is going to be size wise and location. So let's go ahead and stick this one in the machine, line it up with the camera and engrave it. So you will see in here up at the top, I have an option for a construction line. I can just click and drag down to make a construction line. If I hold control, it'll snap it vertically. I'm gonna do this on both ends of the case and just move them so they're touching the edge of the case. So this gives me an idea of how long this item is. Also, if I look, when I'm on the left one, I can see that X is 8.269. And if I look on the right, right on top of the line, I can see that X is 14.889, which means that my object is 6.62 inches wide. So if you want to go through and get an exact middle alignment you can replicate that through just the dashboard by creating construction lines and aligning everything perfectly for my example though i'm just going to place this where i visually think it looks centered i'm not that concerned on this particular item i'm just going to line it up so that it looks good also on here while you're looking at this you can also check this contrast button and it will make your logo appear a lot darker so that it's easier to see you can also change the contrast yourself of the camera and bed so that you can get a different look so it all depends on how you want to do this and if for some reason you have trouble just click on the little sun icon it'll change it back to automatic to whatever the bed originally had so that you can see everything clearly. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this over and engrave it. Here is the final result of the pencil box. These are just a few of the examples of things that I have done with the machine and the camera since I got it. Now, a lot of these things you could do without the camera. Uh, it's not a necessity per se, but it is something that does save me a lot of time and I am glad that I have it. It's also super simple to set up and use and work with, which is always a benefit. Hopefully that answers some of the questions I've been getting about the camera and how I use it. And hopefully it has been helpful to you throughout this video. If you found the video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and if you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And also be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share things like this along the way. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.